using a, a boring bar just to get some metal out of the recess for the die. Once we've got a hole in there, we can do some measuring. Make a nice accurate fit. I'm going to be gentle because I don't want this to, to move on the chuck. I want it to stop transferring it with a, the beam tool. Right, I've got the boring tool touching the edge of the hole. We need to go in for a depth of 400, so I've got my travel dial set on zero. I'm just taking a nice light cut. And there's still a fair bit more to come out to get it the, the correct diameter. We're going to get the depth, get the depth right first. Right, we're getting very near the size now. Take a very light cut. This is just a spring cut from what I bought it over for. I'm watching my travel dial when I get down to me. Which is there. 129 so and we want 131. It's it's all but in that. Right, that's nice that die. Just going to go in there nicely. What we'll do now, I'll turn the tool round to a horrible shop. A horrible shop radius off. Put a nice radius on there to a horrible shop point off. Make sure I've got plenty of clearance on what between the chuck and the cross slide. Nice chamfer. Let's break that edge with a little bit of really fine. Fine emery. Got a nice big counter sink here. We'll use this just to break the just to break the edge on the bottom of the hole. Just to break the edge of the reamed hole. Run the counter sink nice and slow. That's, that's one end finished, machined out to, to take the dies. Well, a little bit on the thin side on metal there, but for what the, what the little grub screws have got to do, there'll be enough there to give them a, a decent a decent thread. It's still 120,000 there, so that's, that's plenty. Right, the next thing is to machine this to be a nice, nice slide and fit in there. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck up a, a piece of scrap steel 
and I'll machine that the right size to fit that hole so I can transfer the size off me dummy piece, my test piece onto that with the next little micrometer. Right, I did say I was going to machine a, a dummy, like a test piece for a nib, but what I've got, I've got a 13mm transfer punch, which is a perfect fit. That's just the fit I need. So I can transfer that diameter onto the end of there with me. Imperial micrometer, no bother at all, because I do like working in an imperial. So that's that's just the sort of fit I want in there, no rocking about, but a nice a nice sliding fit. I'm gonna take the take the chuck off and mount our most tear adapter straight to the head out again. The chuck shouldn't be that tight. It's not. If the chuck's really tight, what I do, I put a bit of hexy bar in there and I've got a bigger spanner that I used to loosen it. And screw it off. Making sure you've got your, your bit of wood to protect your, your little bed. and clean the slightest bit of swarf on that tape is going to put your put your job running a long way out same with your your tape are clean make sure that's clean Just knock some of the, the thickness of the swarf off. Makes it nicer to work on. A lot cleaner. Then we'll put a tail saw centre back in again. Just a gentle, gentle nip, it doesn't take a great lot to keep it in line. That's that's running nice and choggy and it can't be can't be doing anything else. I'm gonna continue using this high speed steel tool because I've had good results with it on that on that particular bit of material. I'll get a close up shot of the end of that. That's it there, it's just it's a five eighth five eighth blank, it's just been hand ground. It's got a nice rounded point on. That's where you get your good finish from a nice because it's taken a nice broad cut. Right, I've measured what measured what test piece which is about 13mm transfer gauge and what I want is 511 thou Take the 30 thou cut, 15 thou side just a rough and cut in the minute We're at 530, 531 now. We want 511, that's 20 thou. What I'll do, I'll take a 5 thou cut, 5 thou, say, 10 thou cut, just to see what sort of finish I can achieve and creep it on the size slowly. It was 0 across uh, zero, uh, cross, cross leg counter, 
daily in a five fold cord. Well now with five, five one five, five one five, it's five one five all the way down. So what that fourth thou? What I'm going to do? I'm just going to dial it one thou in, and I'm going to take another another cut on a slower feed rate. Slow things down a bit. Take like a spring cut. I'd rather take a bit of time and take a couple of extra cuts. Just take too much of it. There's a little bit of time in making that. Making that up there now. I don't want to spoil it. Not the time it's also easier to take it and very light cut with a high speed steel tool bit compared to a an insert bit. Tip tools are great but they, they like to be worked hard. The harder you work them the better finish you actually get. It's not taking much at all, I'll have a, I'll have a measure. That's reading 513. Just the, the natural radius of the tool bit, put a nice a nice curve on there, feels good, it's got an excellent finish on it. Right at the moment of truth, what I'll do, I'll leave the comp, I'll leave the cross slide set to what it's set at. I'm not moving just in case I'm gonna take it on that cut. Nice finish. Right, and that is that's just what I wanted. That's no bullshitting, no emery tape, that's a straight that's a straight finish. Which is just what I want. I'll put the centre back in and just break that edge there. I think I'll be gonna shorten this anyway, but we'll see how it see how it pans out as well. We'll get the job machined. And all I'm gonna do is break the break the sharp edge, put a centre in gently, slow things down a bit. Just use a 45 degree tool to put a nice, nice little chamfer on the end. It always looks better, it's a lot safer as well. You won't cut your fingers on it because if you drop it, it won't damage the end of the shaft. I 
Make sure we're happy with that fit. Very happy with it. The other way around. Anyway, it'll all become clear as shite when I start. Oh man, God! Clumsy twastard. <laughs> 